What's up guys, I am Puneet from Programmage and welcome back to this series on Python. Till now, we have covered 4 different compound data types, lists, tuples, strings and dictionaries. In this video, we will learn about the final one, sets. In Python, sets are similar to how sets work in mathematics. Let's get started. A set is a collection of items like lists and tuples. However, there are some important differences between them. Sets in Python are like sets in mathematics. A set cannot contain duplicate items and these items are not in any particular order. Also, we can only use immutable objects in set like strings, numbers and tuples. So a set cannot have mutable objects like lists and dictionaries. Just three things to remember when we imagine sets in Python. Number one, items of a set are not in any particular order. Number two, no duplicate items are allowed. And the third one, items must be immutable objects. Now that we know what sets are, let's see how we can create them. To create a set, we place items inside curly brackets separated by commas like this. So here I'll say animals equals curly bracket and then I'll add the list of animals as dog, cat, tiger, and elephant. Let me print this set and run it. So I'll say print animals. When I press run, then you can see the set was printed, but you must have noticed that this order of animals is different from this order. This is what I meant when I said that the items of a set are not in any particular order. This is also the reason why set items also don't have indexes. Now let's see what happens if we try to create a set having duplicate items. Inside the set animals, I will repeat the dog string twice. So here I'll add another dog at the end. And now if I press run, then you can see that in the output dog is printed only once even though in the set definition, dog is repeated twice. The duplicate dog was removed from the set because sets in Python automatically remove all duplicate items. It's also possible to create a set that doesn't have any items. To create an empty set, we need to use the set function. Now we cannot use empty curly braces for this because it would create an empty dictionary instead. So here I'll remove this old code and I'll say animals equals set and then I'll print animals, oops, animals. Now when I press run, you can see that an empty set has been printed. The set function that you see here can also be used to create non-empty sets. I'll show you an example. So here I'll add a list inside this set function. I'll say cat, dog, tiger, and elephant. Here we have passed a list inside the set function. The set function converts this list into a set. When I press run, then you can see that this list has been converted to a set because it has curly braces instead of square braces. Here I have passed a list of four animals, cat, dog, tiger, and elephant, and the set function has converted it into a set. That is why the order has been changed. We can convert other iterables like tuples, dictionaries, and strings into a set in a similar way. Now let's see how we can add items to a set. Sets in Python are mutable. We can add and remove items from them. To add a single item to a set, we use the add method. I have this animal set we have been working on in this video. Let me add monkey to it. To add it after the set's name, I will type dot, so animals dot, and then I'll say add and inside the parenthesis, I will pass the monkey string. Now let me print the animal set so that I can verify if monkey was added correctly or not. So I'll say print animals. And now when I press run, then you can see that monkey was also added to the set. We can also add all the elements of iterables like list, tuples and other sets to a set. For that, we can use the update method. Let's take an example. Suppose we have a set and a list like this. Now we want to add all the items of this wild animals list to this animals set. 
We can do that by using the update method like this. So I can say animals dot update wild animals. Now I'll print animals and see what I get. When I press run, you can see that leopard and tiger were added to animals list. One thing to note here is that elephant is common in both animals and wild animals. Since sets cannot have duplicates, the output has only one elephant. By the way, we can also pass multiple iterables to the update method like this. So here along with wild animals, I'll also add a set containing dolphins. When I press run, then as you can see, dolphins was also added to the set of animals. The update function added items from both wild animals and the set containing dolphins to the animal set. Before moving to the next section of the video, I'd like to mention that the programmist team has created an app that allows you to learn Python from your phone. The app contains bit-sized lessons that are easy to understand, a built-in interpreter so that you can run Python on your phone, quizzes and many more features. The app is available on both iOS and Android. The links are in the video description below. Let's now learn how to remove items from a set. To remove an item in a set, we can either use the discard method or the remove method. Let's use the discard method first. I have this set of animals. Now I'll use the discard method as animals.discard. Let me discard the cat. And now let me print animals to see what I get. When I press run, you can see that dog, elephant and tiger are still in the set, but cat has been removed. Now instead of discard, let me try and use the remove method. So here I'll say remove and when I press run, I get the same output of course in jumbled order. Both discard and remove are used to remove an item from a set. However, there's an important difference between them. If the item we're trying to remove is not in the set, discard returns none, whereas the remove method throws an error. Let me change cat to something like ferret here. So I'll say animals.remove ferret and when I press run then python says there's a key error. Now when I use discard and run it you can see that no error was thrown. We do not get any errors and our animal set is printed. What happened here is that this code returned none because ferret is not in the animal set. However, we haven't assigned the return value to anything. Then this print statement prints the animal set. By the way, we can also remove all items in a set at once by using the clear method like this. So here I'll remove this code and I'll say animals.clear and when I press run, then you can see that animals is now an empty set. Let's see how we can find if an item is in the set or not. Similar to other compound data types, we can check if an item is in a set or not by using the in keyword. Let's see an example. So here I'll remove this old code and I'll say print tiger in animals. When I press run, then I get true because indeed tiger is present in the set of animals. If we change tiger to something like ferret and run it, so I'll say ferret when I press run, then this time I get false because ferret is not present in the set of animals. It is also possible to loop through items of a set like other compound data types. Let's see an example. Here I have the same old set from before. I'll remove this code and I'll say for animal in animals print animal. When I press run, then you must have guessed the output by now. All the animals are printed one by one. However, the order in which these items are printed is random. Let's take a look at Python set operations now. As I mentioned before, the way sets work in Python is similar to how sets work in mathematics. In this video, we will cover two set operations, union and intersection. Suppose we have two sets, domestic animals and wild animals like this. The union of these two sets is a set of all items in both domestic animals and wild animals. To find the union of sets, we can either use the union method or use the pipe symbol. 
Let's see an example. So here on my compiler, I'll remove the old code and I'll say domestic animals equals dog, cat, and elephant. And then I'll say why animals equals lion, tiger, and of course, elephant again. Now I can create the union of these sets by saying animals equals domestic underscore animals dot union wild underscore animals. Let me print the animals variable now. I will say print animals. When I press run, then I get a set containing animals from both the domestic animal set and the wild animal set. The order of sets does not matter. Here I can reverse this order and I can say wild underscore animals dot union domestic underscore animals and when I press run, I get the same output. As I mentioned before, we can also use the pipe symbol to find the union. So here I could have also written wild animals pipe domestic animals and when I press run, I get the same output. Now let's talk about intersection of sets. Suppose we have two sets, domestic animals and wild animals like before. The intersection of these two sets is a set of items that are common in both domestic animals and wild animals. To find the intersection of sets, we can either use the intersection method or use the ampersand operator. Let's see an example. So I have the same set of domestic animals and wild animals from before and here instead of saying union, I will say wild animals dot intersection domestic animals. Now when I press run, then I get a set containing elephant because elephant is the common element between domestic animals and wild animals. Now let's use the ampersand operator to find the intersection this time. I will say wild animals ampersand domestic animals and when I press run, I get the same output as before. You can find more information about different set operations and methods in our website programmers.com. I will include the link in the description below. At this point, we have covered all the basics of Python sets. Before we end this video, here is a task for you. Can you guess the output of this program? I will give you a couple of seconds to pause the video. As always, you will find the answer to this question in our GitHub repository. I will also include the link in the description below. Now let us recap what we learned in this video. A set is a collection of unordered items. Since the items do not have any order, they also do not have any indexes. A set also cannot contain duplicate items and all items of a set must be immutable. Although the items of a set need to be mutable, sets themselves are mutable and we can add and remove items from a set. Sets in Python are similar to sets in mathematics. That's why we can perform operations like union and intersection of sets. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something. If you're just watching the video without writing any code, I highly encourage you to try the programs in this video on your own. The only way you can be a good programmer is by trying. By the way, you can find all the programs from this video on GitHub. I've provided the link in the description below. Feel free to copy the programs and edit them as you please. And if you have any questions and feedback, use the comment section below. In the next video, we will learn more about the range function in detail, which makes it easier to work with sequences of numbers. Join me in this video series and let's explore the exciting world of programming together. If you like this video, hit the like button now and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring that bell icon so that you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Happy programming.